Have you signed a real estate contract and you want to get out of that sale? Well, today I want to talk about what's possible. First off, let me introduce myself. My name is Troy Funk, and it's Funk, F-U-N-K, Funk. I am a licensed real estate broker in the state of Florida, and I have been in sales going on 40 years. And in that time, I've had multiple years where I've personally sold over 100 properties. I've been a real estate investor owning up to 18 rental properties. And I would say safely say that I have dealt with hundreds of situations where the buyer wants to cancel the contract. And I want to share my experience. Now, in saying that, I am not an attorney. I'm not giving legal advice. I'm just giving uh, stories and ideas to consider if you're thinking of canceling a real estate contract and what that entails. Now, when you talk to an attorney, you're gonna get legal advice. I wanna, I wanna expand on that a little more because I'm not an attorney, but I wanna give you more practical advice from a real estate broker's perspective on canceling a real estate contract. Well, first off, let me tell you where I'm at. I'm on Palm Avenue here in downtown Sarasota, and this is a beautiful area. This is in 34236. It's the wealthiest zip code here in Sarasota. Right now, it's an area where a lot of people want to uh, live, and we've had a lot of sales, and you know, not everything goes perfectly. And just want to expand on that. So you've signed a real estate contract and you want to get out of the sale. Well, there's two parts to the purchase of a contract. Now, two basic parts. One is, of course, the emotional standpoint of emotionally, how do you feel when you're buying that property? And then the other aspect is the business aspect. What's the business aspect of buying real estate? Well, they're very different, but a lot of us let our emotional state control our business state. And that's where I wanna throw some ideas at you. If you're thinking of canceling the contract, what's possible? Now, I've been in that situation myself, and I wanna just share a couple stories of how things actually worked out very well, but they didn't start out looking very well. And one of them was, I was buying a house here in Sarasota, and it was, it was in a real good area, it's no, uh, known as Arlington Park, and it was around that area, great location. I had a purchase agreement from the owner who was a bank, it was a bank owned property. And when I put it under contract, I knew I had a good opportunity to buy that property, a good value to buy that little home. And my intention was to fix this property up and turn it into a vacation rental time. That was my intention for buying this property. Well, as time moved on, there was a title problem. And that title problem gave the seller the option to correct that title and close when the title was clean. At the time, it wasn't a big deal. Six months later, you know, everything had changed. It changed for me a lot. Number one, the condition of that property had gotten much worse. There was a leak in the roof and there was mold and the house was not in the same condition when I put it under contract. And being real, I, at that time, I was also having, I would call it marital distress and <laughs> whole mindset of now buying a property and then uh, not feeling as excited about it as I, I did six months earlier and then having to fix it up. It just made no sense. And this house was a wreck. Now, I was excited about it being a wreck, but then I it, it became a headache. The idea that I would have to purchase this property, I did not want it. I want out of this contract. That's my emotional state. But the business side of me kind of took over and said, wait a minute, you have a contract to buy an asset. You know, where are you from a business standpoint with this property? And yes, you don't want to buy it. You don't want to close on it, but what else is possible? Ironically, that house had gone up so much in value in six months. I mean, the property value just soared. And I realized if I close on this house and I just sell it, I do absolutely nothing. There's a nice profit in, in it for me. I, I do have something of value. I have a purchase agreement to buy this house. And even though my intention is completely changed, if I put on my business hat, not my emotional hat, I should close on this house and sell it. And that's exactly what I did. I closed on the house the day of closing. I put it back on the market. <laughs> the market gave me a lot of resistance at that point because I purchased it. I put it back on the market at a different price. And a lot of buyers, you know, there's no secret anymore. They can see what I paid for it and when I closed on it. And you know, where do I justify putting the price up so much higher 
a day after closing. Price is affected by supply and demand. It's not, price is not affected by what an owner paid for it. You know, just because I paid a certain amount of money doesn't mean that's what the properties were. And if that were true, that would mean that if I inherited the property and paid zero, that the property would be worth zero. And obviously that's not correct either. And if I had paid too much for the property and the property went down, then you know what I paid for it has nothing to do with the, pro the what the value is. So a lot of buyers couldn't see that. And you know, it, it took a little bit of time, but it did resell right away because it was a good opportunity. It was a house in a good location, needed a lot of work. I priced it aggressively, even though it was a lot higher than what I paid for it. And I sold it and I made a good profit. And I'm glad I didn't back out of that because my emotional state was back out of that purchase agreement <laughs> and I did it. And it turned out to be the right decision. Now, ironically, the buyer that bought that property, renovated it, put it back on the market, made a very good profit. And then the house sold again. The third buyer made a profit as well. It sold three times in the course of one year. And the strangest thing is the person that got the best value on that property was the last buyer <laughs> that kept that property because the market had, the area had improved, the market had done well, and he had the asset did better than all of us <laughs> that turned around and made a profit for reselling it. So, okay, that situation, you know, I want to, I want to sell this property or I, I, you know, I'm thinking I want out of the contract and, and maybe your business side says, wait, you know, is getting out of this contract the right decision? And sometimes it's not, it, maybe it's just a focus of where you're at, you know, where's your focus. Maybe your focus is different and my focus was I'm buying a rent, I'm buying a vacation property to the end of the day, I realize I'm basically buying a, a wholesale property. I'm gonna flip this and make quick money. It was not my intention, but it worked out well. I still closed on it. Now, I, what's interesting, a lot of people, we live in a vacation area in Sarasota, Florida, and a lot of people own second housing. And what I've seen is people purchase property and they, they, they retire here, but sometimes they get a head start and they buy the property before they retire and sometimes years before they retire, especially here in Sarasota, get the right property and they, they find it and something happens and they think, should I, should I back out of the sale? It's not, you know, I've got years to buy anyway. I, I did another video about, uh, you know, when's the right time to buy real estate. And the bottom line is the right time to buy real estate is when you can afford it <laughs> because that factor changes. Um, life changes, things happen in, in your life and maybe you want to buy an asset but if you don't secure that asset uh, and you, you gamble that maybe in a couple years things could get better, it might not. And it may take you out of the place of being a buyer for that uh, type property. So we've seen people that have chosen to wait. It was a wrong decision. So as time moved on, I, I have had that happen multiple times. I put my properties under contract. My focus has been different. And then I realized I have to refrain and think, what's the business aspect? Does it still make sense to move forward? Because it might. It might make sense to secure that asset and hold on to it until the timing gets right. And there's a lot of things that go wrong. I bought a property where I purchased the property, good value, and the, the seller was re-roofing the house or he had a roofing company go in there. And when that happened, we had a terrible rainstorm and they didn't secure the roof and the roof collapsed all the uh, uh, ceiling came down and I had a contract to buy the property but the condition changed drastically now the seller said I'm going to repair the roof I'm gonna have the roofer there but you're not allowed to come look at this property now I didn't feel comfortable with that but I did talk to an attorney basically gave the attorney the math this is what I'm buying the property for this is what it's worth this is what it's gonna take to fix a problem and my attorney said just hang tight those are ideas that if you're thinking if i want to back out number one make sure you want to back out <laughs> make sure it's not just your emotional state saying hey things are different than when i was under contract with this property before uh my life changed things happened uh, you know well, wait, is, is buying that property still a good investment? Is it still a good opportunity? Or is there money on the table? And if so, maybe you still want to purchase that property. But what's, let's just say you don't, something happens. Now, I was buying another property here in, or actually in Venice, 
and it was a new condominium. I had a contract with the bank. It was a bank owned property and I got such a smoking value on that. I was so excited and I took a calculated risk. I figured, you know, regardless of what this property looks like, I'm buying it. Now I couldn't see the inside of it. So, you know, I, I was taking a big risk, but I was getting such a discount that I was very comfortable with that purchase, uh, not seeing the inside. Now, about a week before closing, the tenant was being evicted. It was, uh, I think it was the former owner and the, the bank was uh, evicting them. And I, I, I got possession or I got to access into that property be right before closing. And which was really strange was I had my private money lender with me at the same time. <laughs> And we got in it together before um, I was scheduled to close. Now I had a deposit on the property. I was you know, very excited about this. And as soon as I walked into this condo, I realized there was a big problem. I could smell um, egg. I, that was the best way. It was just a, this, this distinct feeling, this smell that I know uh, having owned another property that had Chinese drywall. And had a, it had a very foul smell and I knew that smell. It was it was the smell of Chinese drywall. And sure enough, I went under the sink. I noticed all the copper was black. The AC copper was black. When you open a switch plate, you could see all the wire was black. This house had Chinese drywall. And it wasn't disclosed because it was a bank foreclosure. I was buying a foreclosure. I was getting a good value, uh, not knowing what I'm buying. And this was going to be a nightmare. Now, I had owned a Chinese drywall home before and you know I guess it, it just really set me back that I was not going to close on this one. You know I don't care. I'm worst case scenario do I lose my pot deposit? That's fine. That will be much less than taking ownership of this property and then having to disclose Chinese drywall uh, which I would do of course and then having to deal with that toxic problem. So I wasn't going to buy I wasn't going to buy that condo and I had a deposit. And the first thing I did when I made that decision is I let the seller know right away, I'm not closing. <laughs> I'm not buying this property. What can we work out? And basically putting them on notice in a very kind way, I'm not gonna close. I'd like to work out an agreement with my deposit. Now, truthfully, I would have given it all up. <laughs> I mean, I just didn't wanna buy it, but and they came back with an answer that was better than I thought. And they said, we'll split it with you. We'll give you half your deposit back. Now I asked kindly and I got a kind response saying, we'll split your deposit, call it good. I was very happy with that answer. And I think a lot of that comes to when you're negotiating with the seller, a lot of times we think we have to get mean. I, I think the issue is we really just have to be upfront and let them know and really kind of work out that what's possible mentality what what's the solution here I, I didn't demand my full deposit i was just asking the seller what do they feel and would be reasonable now um i could have fought that i could have said no it wasn't disclosed but you know time is money i i was happy with losing half because i was willing to give up the, uh, the whole thing so that's normally a solution a lot of times is that when you have an escrow dispute try to come to a solution. Now I've had it happen many times that when you notify the seller that you do not want to purchase their property, the seller is actually relieved and happy to sign a cancellation for many reasons. A lot of times they have decided not to sell and now you're giving them an out as well. So you don't know unless you ask and it certainly it helps to ask in a nice way, but a lot of times the seller will just release the deposit. They don't want to sell or their, their plans have changed or they may even have a buyer willing to pay more money. Our purchase agreements state that there's a mediation process that takes place. When we have a litigation situation that the buyer and seller first, before we get legal and angry at each other, let's try to mediate. And that's really what, what takes place. Now, of course, uh, if you need legal advice, talk to an attorney, but um, hopefully that helps you. I mean, first off, before you're think if you're thinking of backing out, consider, uh, what else is possible? Maybe that's not the right decision at that point. And then the other option is just to think about what, if you do have to negotiate a settlement, uh, try to do it kindly and do it with a broker that certainly will help you in that interest. So anyway, I hope that has been helpful to you. 
And if it has been helpful to you, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, as a broker, I handle real estate all over the state of Florida and I'm happy to work with you. I have a website, my website, troyfunk.com. And you can look at properties all over the state of Florida with this website if you're, if you're looking to come down to Florida and hopefully uh, find the right property. But if you, if you have a problem with that and I'm your broker, certainly I'm gonna help you with that. But not giving you legal advice, just practical advice. Just think it out before you walk away from a purchase agreement because you may be walking away from something you'll, you could regret later uh, that, that would have been a good decision to have closed on it. In closing, thank you. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.